Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at gastric secretion. How do we regulate the secretion of the various chemicals, enzymes and hydrochloric acid, for example, from the stomach? Let's take a look. So to begin, we need to focus on the stomach itself and have a look inside the walls of the stomach, what you're gonna find are these various pits. So remember, you've got various parts of the stomach. You've got, for example, the body and the antral regions, and we're focusing here on what's mostly the body of the stomach. Inside you see these various pits, and inside the pits you see various cell types. Now these cells produce various things. What are they? What do they do? So let's first go from superficial to deep. Up the top here, we've got what's called surface mucus cells. So these are surface mucus cells. And surface mucus cells, unsurprisingly, they secrete mucus. Now, what type of mucus do they secrete? It is thick mucus and it is alkaline, so it's basic, meaning it releases a base. This is bicarbonate, so it releases bicarbonate. Now what's so important about bicarbonate in this mucus? It neutralizes acid. I'll talk about that in a second. Let's now look at these cells here. These are also mucus cells, but these are called mucus neck cells. Now we don't really know a lot about the mucus neck cells, but we do know that it can try, it, it releases a thin mucus, a thin mucus, which they often refer to as being slightly acidic. And they think that it's potentially being released to help maintain these other products as it moves up through to the surface. Then we've got this sneaky guy here. This is what we call a parietal cell. A parietal cell. And what parietal cells release are two important things. They release hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. The role of hydrochloric acid is to denature. It denatures proteins. That's really important, denatures proteins. Think about it like this. If you've got a protein, we know it's a three-dimensional structure folded in upon itself, string of amino acids. If you wanna break that up, because we wanna turn, what do we wanna turn? We wanna turn proteins, ultimately, because we're in the digestive system here, into amino acids. And the only way we can do that is by chopping them up. But that's like a big ball of yarn. Imagine getting a pair of scissors to a ball of yarn or ball of wool and trying to chop it up. It's really hard. What do you need to do first? You need to undo the ball of yarn so it's one long linear strand and then you can chop it up. Hydrochloric acid, what that does is it unravels that ball of yarn. That's its job. So that the molecular scissors called enzymes that come along can now chop them up. Now I'll talk about those molecular scissors in a second. Parietal cells don't just release hydrochloric acid, they also release intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor. Now what intrinsic factor does is it allows for us to absorb B12 in the intestines. Why do we want to absorb B12? We need B12, also known as cobalamin. It allows for DNA synthesis. That's important for cells that are rapidly being made like our red blood cells. And if we don't have B12, we don't have red blood cells. And if we don't have red blood cells, we don't carry oxygen. And if we don't carry oxygen, we become anemic. So without intrinsic factor, no B12, no B12, anemia. So important. All right, let's now move down. These are called chief cells chief cells, and chief cells release something called pepsinogen. Pepsinogen. Now, I've told you in previous videos, and you may have forgotten, that's fine, that if it ends in, if you have a word in biology that ends in O-G-E-N, it means it's inactive and it needs to be activated. Effectively, it gets activated by chopping the OG 
E, the O-G-E-N off, and it will become pepsin. Pepsin is, once it turns into pepsin, pepsin are these molecular scissors. That's pepsin. Effectively, the term you would use in this case is a protease. Remember, A's, enzyme, protein, protein. So it's an enzyme that chops protein. So that's what's re released here. How do we activate pepsinogen? It's the hydrochloric acid that does it. So we need hydrochloric acid to activate pepsinogen into pepsin. That's important. You might think, why doesn't it just release pepsin here? Pretty much everything in the body is made out of proteins. If this cell is producing the active enzyme, pepsin, it's gonna digest itself. So it needs to secrete it in an indigestible form, uh, or a, a form that allows for it to not digest itself, I should say. All right, finally here, we have our endocrine cells. And you might be thinking, why isn't it sitting here like the others? Remember what endocrine cells do, they release hormones into bloodstreams, right? And so, not into ducts, it releases it into bloodstreams. Now there's different types of endocrine cells. It's not one that releases all of these, they're different types. So the types of endocrine cells that there are include G cells and they release gastrin. You can have D cells, they release somatostatin. And you can have ECL cells which release histamine. Now ECL stands for, I'll write it up here, ECL stands for enterochromophon like cells. And they release histamine. Now what do they do? What's the importance of all these? All right and this is going to be the focus of the rest of this video, they regulate the secretion of hydrochloric acid from the parietal cells. So G cells, gastrin, can stimulate hydrochloric acid release from parietal cells. Histamine can also stimulate. Somatostatin, on the other hand, inhibits hydrochloric acid release from the parietal cells. So they are regulators, both, both positive and negative. And that's what I want the rest of this video to focus on. How do we regulate the release of acid from the stomach? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start off by drawing up hydrochloric acid. So we've got hydrochloric acid here. Now, one thing I didn't talk about, which I said I was going to, is how bicarbonate neutralizes acid. So this is a, a very quick aside, I'll draw it here. Hydrochloric acid, as an acid, remember what acids do is they hate themselves and they split themselves apart. So it releases a hydrogen ion and its conjugate base, chloride. Now what this hydrogen ions do is it denatures proteins. We spoke about that. And it also activates pepsinogen into pepsin. But they can also damage tissues around them. So what we also have is bicarbonate that's being released from these surface mucus cells. Now bicarbonate, when it comes across hydrogen, they bind together. The positive and the negative balance each other out. And now what we get is two hydrogen, carbon and three oxygen. This is called carbonic acid. Carbonic acid. And what can carbonic acid do? It can, because acids hate themselves and split themselves apart, it can split itself into carbon dioxide and water. That's great because we can just breathe off the carbon dioxide and utilize that water. Brilliant. So that's the benefit of having bicarbonate. Now let's go back to what we we're gonna talk about. We've got hydrochloric acid here. And I said hydrochloric acid is released by the parietal cells. All right. Now, what stimulates the release of hydrochloric acid? I said a couple of things, right? Let's first start with histamine. Histamine is released from what cells? The enterochromophon-like cells. So that can stimulate the release of hydrochloric acid. What else can do it? 
I said gastrin from the G cells. So let's write that up. Gastrin. And they're released from G cells. They can stimulate the parietal cells to release hydrochloric acid. Now what else? Let's not focus on somatostatin yet. Let's focus on some other stimulators. What can stimulate hydrochloric acid to be released? Well, what I want to do is, okay, I'll tell you what can do. Acetylcholine. I did a video that focuses on the enteric nervous system, the way that the neurons in the gut can regulate the whole digestive process. And I said, the main positive neurotransmitter that does it is acetylcholine. And I said, it's released by the enteric nervous system. That can stimulate it as well. All right. Now what I want to talk about, we know the main positive regulators, I want to talk about how we release hydrochloric acid without even eating food. Have you noticed that sometimes you might walk into a restaurant and just the smell of the food makes your stomach start gurgling and the acid starts getting released? Or what even just the thought of food, even before you get to the restaurant, right? So let's talk about that. There's actually three different phases that we can separate that looks at stimulating hydrochloric acid release. And these three phases include the cephalic phase, which is what's happening in the brain, the gastric phase, which is what's happening actually in the stomach, which we've drawn up here, right? That's what's happening here. And the intestinal phase, which is what's happening after the stomach, mostly in the duodenum, the first part. Now, the cephalic phase is really interesting. The cephalic phase involves Thought, just thinking about food. It could be sight, seeing food, smell, smelling food, or even just the beginning of just tasting food. Any of these things coming from the brain, right, can trigger hydrochloric acid release. How? Well, remember, we've got our brain. That's not a roast chicken, that's the brain. And we've got the medulla and we've got the pons, midbrain pons, medulla and so forth. Remember I said in that last video, if you watched it, the video on the enteric nervous system, that the extrinsic system that can control it, we've got the vagus nerve. And what did I say the vagus nerve can do? It can travel down to the enteric nervous system and trigger the release of acetylcholine from the enteric nervous system. So that's how thought, sight, smell, taste stimulates the vagus nerve. And that's what it does. Stimulates the enteric nervous system to release acetylcholine. That stimulates the parietal cells to release hydrochloric acid. This constitutes around about 30%. I'll write it over here. Constitutes about 30% of all gastric acid being released. Just thinking, smelling, seeing, tasting. Now, what about the gastric phase? What's happening here? Well, a couple of things. First is, when, we, when food goes into the stomach, so we've chewed it up, swallowed it, goes down the esophagus, into the stomach, our stomach distends, right? So we can get stomach distension. Now, when the stomach distends, we can trigger two types of neural reflexes, local, or intrinsic reflexes, where the neurons of the stomach, the sensory neurons, they innovate the enteric nervous system, which then doom, doom, stimulates the parietal cells to release hydrochloric acid, but it can also travel up to the central nervous system as well. And again, feedback system going down. All right, so that's one way that the gastric can do it. Another way is that once we're in the stomach, right, and some acid has been released, we start to break proteins into peptides and amino acids. And these can trigger gastrin to be released from the G cells. All right. These are the two major ways that the stomach can regulate it, and this constitutes about 60% of hydrochloric acid secretion. What about in the intestines? Well, in the intestines, remember, these proteins and amino acids will be traveling down into the intestines as well. And what we end up getting are more proteins in the intestines, peptides, 
amino acids. And what they do is they trigger gastrin to be released from G cells in the intestine. So yes, not only do we have G cells within the stomach itself, we have G cells within the intestines. And what do you think that does? That is going to stimulate the release of hydrochloric acid. This only constitutes around about 10% of hydrochloric acid release. Now, this is just the positive regulation. We actually have negative regulation at each stage because we have homeostasis. So how do we negatively regulate this whole process? Well, let's first, I'm gonna draw it up in red, the negative. We've done the positive in blue, negative in red. First thing is, sometimes people might have anxiety or depression and other types of thoughts and these can negatively regulate the descending signal. That simple. What about the stomach? What would you think about this? Hydrochloric acid, when that's being produced, what do you think that can do? When that hydrochloric acid is being produced, it can drop the pH, right? Meaning making it more acidic. And this can stimulate the D cells. Do you remember what the D cells were? the D cells that produced somatostatin. So the negative pH can stimulate D cells to release somatostatin. And what does somatostatin do? It negatively regulates the parietal cells. Brilliant. What else? Well, in the intestines, we don't just have proteins and peptides and amino acids coming through. We've got a bunch of stuff coming through, right? We have, I'll write it here. We have acids, right? So hydrochloric acid. We've got fats. We've got, again, proteins and peptides. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that's coming through. And what they do is they will trigger two types of chemicals to be released. First is called CCK and another one is called secretin. And they're both released from cells called enteroendocrine cells which are in the duodenum. Now CCK stands for cholecystokinin, which literally means to contract the gallbladder. So it's got another function to release bile, but that's another video. But what they do in this instance is they're released and they can inhibit hydrochloric acid. What they can also do is CCK and secretin can also negatively regulate gastrin release as well. They also can slow down motility. So less contents is being pushed through the whole tract. So this is the regulation of hydrochloric acid secretion. And these are the different chemicals, enzymes, acids, bases that are released from the cells of the stomach. I'm Dr. Mike, and I hope that was helpful.